Dear viewers, my name is Tindi once more. I'm a strength advocate and an idea accelerator. I want to, in a special way, welcome you to this session, empowering session again, where we are talking about uh, spenditude. In my preamble, I must remind you that we are all, you know, we, we all have a moral obligation to flatten the curve of this global pandemic, COVID-19. Now, let us not just wash our hands, but also follow them in prayers. I hope this session enthuses you with the terrific synergy you need to transform your life to the better. Today, I'll be talking about future-proofing yourself and the concept of rewirement as opposed to retirement. So, straight, let me start with what we call side hustles. You know, side hustle is, 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 is a way of making extra cash that allows you flexibility to pursue what you are interested in. The idea of having a single job for life and you know following a career, a career ladder within an organization is increasingly becoming highly unlikely. So side hustling is an attractive uh, venture to all defenders, spenders, and even slenders. Now defenders tend to see it as a way of not wasting resources. Slenders, on the other hand, tend to see it as a way of making ends meet while spenders see it as a fuel for their lifestyle. Now, we have two types of side hustles. One that is high personal exact exertion, you know, calls for high personal exertion, and the other that is not. For example, if you choose to uh, do a Uber, for example, you know, it will require a lot of exertion, as opposed to if you are doing A and B in your house, you know, renting a property, your, 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 your house. Now, there are examples of side hustles you can consider. You can drive Uber, like I've said, maybe make deliveries using a motorcycle or, a, or, or your car. You can uh, be a fitness instructor in a gym or do tutoring or coaching. You can be a consultant or a freelancer is, as part of your hustling. You can engage in e-commerce, which is so much around us now. You can do babysitting and international babysitting is even more trendy in case uh, it, it can work for you. You can do house cleaning, get yourself involved in uh, gardening or landscaping. Uh, you can be a language translator, depending on the language you have. Social media marketing is also trending right now. As you can be a virtual assistant. Uh, you can engage in blogging and so on and so forth. But get the bottom line is you must think about uh, side hustling, something that you can do uh, on a part-time basis. Now, you know, the future of work is changing so very much. There is a shift in our demographic makeup and our economic environment really, really undergoing a lot of shifts. Lots of social shifts also are taking place uh, that are reshaping the nature and even the future of, of our jobs. And so we have with us here what we call the gig economy, uh, a labor market characterized by the pre uh, prevalence of short-term contracts or freelance work as opposed to full-time work. You know. So living and working in the gig economy means taking more responsibility for your, your personal finances. Your, your dreams, therefore, must, should not be worth more, much more than your, your sleep. If you feel that your real passion is not sustained through, you know, employment, formal employment, then a side hustle can be a great way to indulge and make great cash. Well, a great idea, what you need is just a great idea and a little spare time. And, um, you know, you can have yourself a great little business. So you need to work hard or work smart or even both. But essence, essentially, the future of work is being discussed and debated globally across the world, you know, and technological revolution is really failing this debate. Now, when you add to that, artificial intelligence is already predicting our consumer behavior. Now, AI is, new, is, is the new electricity in town. You know, it's our newest best friend. So you can't run away from it, you've got to embrace it. You swim or sink, you know. The move towards this gig economy isn't good news for most people. Permanent employment, you know, came about because humans have a fundamental need for security, safety, and predictability. But organizations right now are looking at things differently. And so we must, so must we, you and I. You know, the roles of the future will require you to have very good influencing skills, be able to tell a story and negotiate, you know. The top skills 
of the future, according to a survey by, by, by LinkedIn, includes creativity, persuasion, and collaboration. Now, that, that means that humans are now looking toward, uh, for, uh, forward to talking to each other as opposed to <laughs> machine talk, you know. So the onus is firmly on an individual, that is you. You need to keep yourself employable. Although it's predicted that the future of work will change dramatically, the, <coughs> the core human skills, there are core human skills, <coughs> sorry, that are sustainable and will be even more valued in the future. What is clear right now as we speak is that we must continue to learn, to refresh, you know, to up our knowledge so that we are future ready. And I must assure you folks that no one will do this for us. The digitalization of university courses and degrees means that you can study your co any course from any university anywhere in the world as at now. So you go to upskill, keep learning and be creative. In any case, we are all hardwired to, you know, a continuous learning. So we are living in changing times, folks. What worked for our parents may not necessarily work for us. So being able to be more focused on your financial situation is, 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 is a key skill that will assist you to maneuver through this changing landscape. Now, like I said before, transferable skills such as problem solving, uh, communication, and the teamwork along with an op optimistic mindset are key assets you need to keep yourself with in this fourth industrial revolution now this takes me to what i call shape up or shape out as you know i talk especially to the still young dynamic enthusiastic uh, workforce now you, you appreciate that digital technology is raging through right now innovation starts with you you don't have to colonize mass to be innovative, you know. You must learn to get out of your learn to get out of the box, learn to get out of your way, your own way for innovation to succeed. You must be willing and able to recreate the box. You've got to be your chief age officer, very sophisticated at industry analysis, always abreast with mega trends that are that are shaping the future of work and you know, determining uh, what what will happen tomorrow. I must and there are you to be aware of the flawed assumptions you know uh, as you reposition yourself strategically into the future that is coming the future is bright but only for those who are prepared there is nothing like luck luck is when opportunity meets preparedness now create value through design thinking you know you, you must try as uh, an employee or a prospective employee to have a clear compelling vision not only for yourself, but also for your professional development and personal mastery. Now, hone cutting edge skill sets while embracing the inner warrior so as to win locally and dream globally. This is possible, it's doable. Many folks have done it successfully. And now, if not, why not? If others have done it, so can you do it? Think through the whole set of steps that you may have to take. To create unique positioning for your personal brand you know and business acceleration if if, if in, in case you are in the employment sector so you don't need to <laughs> let me remind you that you don't need united nations qualifications to get things done the lion is sleeping within you it's time you wake it up so that you get things going there is a new reality out here you must look for ways of engaging in in a passive income you must look for new ways of earning side income to take control not only of your present but also of your future so what are you currently doing to shape up that is a very important question for you now uh, let me move quickly to the concept of rewirement as opposed to retirement you know retirement could kill you or make you go mad it's an outdated construct that we should really give a complete makeover it's not healthy for a person to stop working all together they'll go mad fast and then and then probably die early you know a prominent australian psychiatrist down here says that the concept is deeply flawed and the term retirement should be as well retired you know so retired you know we, we drive on tires all week and then we get to the weekend and we may need to 
put new tires, you know, retire or re retread the threads of, of our tires. So is it retirement you're seeking for or rewirement? I want to invite you that we need to constantly be rewiring ourselves for the future so that we afford, uh, avoid retirement. Constantly plan your rewirement and it should start now not many years into the future because the future begins now. The future belongs to those who are prepared. We always are sure that some are saying, you know, I can't retire. I mean, I can't wait for my retirement. I deserve it. Well, let me remind you folks. Yes, you remind, uh, you deserve it, but plan for that day. Don't be fooled into thinking that you have to stop working just because, you know, that's what your parents did. It may not be working. It will not work well with you right now. We constantly have to rewire ourselves, change tract, improve our money behavior, track our progress, and be ready to adapt with the changing times. We have to find ways to receive income for all days of the week and into next week, throughout your 30s, 40s, 50s, over the weekend when you are 60s and 70s, and then next week when you get to 80s and 90s. Income is pretty important through all the stages of our lives. Yet, we tend to focus on this mythical retirement as a time when we stop earning. I think this is very, this is grossly, in, you know, insensible because you don't stop eating because you have retired. So how can we have a sense, uh, you know, of, of your required income in this mythical retirement period if you don't know how you are spending right now? Folks, let me take you to the three critical phases of what we call rewirement. Remember rewirement and not retirement. Now, the rewirement strategy has about three phases. That is Monday to Friday. That is when you are 10 years to when you are about 50 years. And this is what we call the highest exertion phase when you use a lot of energy to make ends meet. Then we have the second phase, which we call Saturday and Sunday. And this is phase two, which is our, our low exertion, but highly relevant income phase. That when, when some of you think of going into retirement. Then, of course, the third phase is next week. And uh, this is phase three, our time to enjoy some non-exertion income and ensure we have a steady income and, you know, we stay healthy. So on what day, this is my question to you, my viewers, on what day do you think most people plan their retirement? I think most people plan it on Friday, late, late Friday night, you know, in the late 50s. And the, the question is why? You see, early in, in the week, when in our 30s and 40s, we don't see it as very relevant. By the time we get to Wednesday, which is our 30s, we have a WTF, wait till Friday moment, uh, you know, to plan for the weekend. But let me remind you, rewirement doesn't have to wait. So start now. So what should we do to take care of these three phases? Of course, if you're looking at phase one, which is uh, Monday to Friday, please go through my sessions of uh, Spend It With Again. And for phase three, I would just pray for you that you take good care of yourself. But in this particular session, allow me focus on phase two, which is Saturday and Sunday when you are in your uh, uh, 60s and 70s. Now, the weekend should be planned for earlier in the week. That is, you know. However, if you're already closing in right now as we speak, it's not too late. What should we do? One, improve your money behavior by sleeping well, having a mindful money narrative and making baby, baby step changes on your expenditure. Create a side hustle that causes little exertion and, and of course that has regular income. Again, number three, open your mind to learning new skills. Weekenders are highly sought after people, you know, one for their wisdom and, and two for their work ethics. So take bearable hours of workload and again, ensure you're not too expensive so that you are employable. Number four, understand the tax and superannuation systems and use it as a strategy to create a weekend that delivers income. Uh, well, add to that some income exerting uh, strategy so that you, you know you have like kind of a side hustle. And finally, if you're on your Saturday or Sunday, prepare for phase three, which is when you are in your 80s plus. Next week, which is the 80s, has many, many challenges. So set yourself up for next week on the weekend right now when you are in your 50s 
and 70s. Please don't retire and die. Rewire and live. By this I mean to say that there are, most people here say that there are only three benefits to being over 60. One, enjoying your grandkids. Two, uh, you know, having heaps and heaps and loads of wisdom. And finally, having time on your hands. Personally, I think this is not true. There, are, there is so much life ahead of you if you are on your weekend. Consider some side hustles that I can give you here. One, if you are in your 60s and 70s, what the people call a retirement, I would want you to make it a requirement session. Requirement by one, participating in polls. They may, they may pay for your time and you also get free lunch. Become a tour guide, you know. This combines both walking, talking, and, and, and your wisdom, which you have gathered over the years. Number three, rent your car or house and, and live in a small rented apartment. Uh, again, you can do house sitting. International house sitting will be, will be, will be great at this time. Check out for, uh, websites to see if, if you have skills that could be, could be hired out. As sell out some of your possessions. You may have some romantic clutch and attachment to some of your possessions, but this could be the time to sell them so that you, you know, you, you walk light, you know, if you must. Again, use your wisdom to tutor. Write letters to, to the editor. You can, be, um, you can be a columnist on the local tabloids or international ones. And you can even blog and eventually attract adverts which can bring for you some, uh, you know, side income. Again, you can become an A and B concierge, you know, rent your house, your own house, spare some room and, you know, lease it out for, you know, guests who pass by. Again, you can also try to become a tour, or, you know, a tour guide, rather, a, a worker overseas. It's possible. I've seen a lot of retirees going overseas for, for greener pastures. So don't you think that you're now age 60s, 70s, you must just sit home and wait to die. Now, I also must encourage you to seek advice on how money works in retirement. I've seen a lot of retirees with lump sum, which seems to flip through their fingers very fast and they become broke, develop diseases of civilization like hypertension, heart, heart cardiovascular complications, and, and, and they die. Remember that old age is full of gray wisdom you know that old adage if you don't use it you'll lose it use that wisdom of old, old age or else you'll lose it life is short don't wait till friday get into the habit of side hustling before you reach your weekend again remember folks that retirement is so very last century don't wait for the weekend you need to rewire constantly i must in a special way uh, as I conclude uh, this session, give special thanks to my two wonderful colleagues, Paul Gordon and Jerry Robertson, uh, who authored uh, the book uh, Spenditude, which I have used uh, uh, to get, gain some of the insights I've shared with you in these sessions. I really pray that you, uh, you, you rework on yourself and you remember always that you're a work in progress. Like I said in my previous sessions, I hope I've been of service to you. Let's meet at the top. 